Today, we're gonna make a reusable health component that can be used for many things in our game. And I'll just do a quick demo. I'm here in the first person project and I can pick up this gun and I can fire it at these little cylinders which represent an enemy. And when their health gets to zero, they are destroyed. And then I can also walk inside this giant white box. And when I do that, I get a print string that says health is zero that lets me know that I, the player, have also taken damage. So let's get started. All right, and here I am in Unreal Engine. I have a fresh first person template project. First thing I'm gonna do is go into my weapon component and I'm just going to get rid of this sound because it's kind of loud and annoying to me. So I'll just delete that. And other than that, let's just do a quick demo. We can grab this gun and then we can shoot projectiles. But I wanna create a system where we can have health and we can go to our first person character. We can add some health variables. And then if we create an enemy for this game, we can go to that actor and add some health variables. And then any actor that we create, we can keep adding those same variables, but it would be much more efficient if we had a reusable block of code that we could add to any actor to handle the health. And if we right click and create a new blueprint, there's an actor component and it actually says exactly that. It's a reusable component that we can add to any actor. So let's create one of those. I'm gonna call this BP health component. And in here, I'm gonna create two variables. The first one is for tracking the maximum health that the character can have. And the second one will also be an integer and this will be the current health to keep track of how much health the character currently has. And right on begin play, I want to set current health to maximum health and this will just start the player with full health. We do need to make sure that our maximum health has a starting value. So I'll just put 100 for simplicity. And this may be something we wanna reuse again. So I'm going to collapse it to a function and call this refill health. And now we can use this again. If we had like a health pack or something, we could just call this function to refill the health back to 100. I'm gonna create another function and this is going to be for handling damage. So I'll create a new function and call this damage handling. And in here, we want to be able to take an input of whatever the damage is. So I'll create a new input of an integer and I'll call this damage. And we want to get whatever our current health is and subtract from that the incoming damage and then we'll set this to the current health. Now from here, I wanna do one more thing. I'm gonna get my return node and I wanna have this function return whether the player's health has become zero. So I will create a new return and that's gonna be a bool and I'm gonna call this health is health depleted. And from this set node, we can get this reference and we can type is less than or equal to, and we'll leave that at zero. And now this function will return either true or false if the health has reached zero or gone below it. Now, one more interesting thing is we could actually pass a negative value in here to do healing because a negative plus a negative equals a positive. But in order to do that, we do need one more thing. We need to clamp this value to make sure that our current health can never be set higher than our maximum health. And now we have a function that can be used for various purposes and it will also return is the health depleted so we could use that as well. So let's compile this and I'm gonna go back to my first person character and I'm gonna add that new health component. And now we just need a way to handle any damage that is incoming. So luckily there's already something built into Unreal Engine for that, this any damage event. And we can just get a reference to our health component and then type damage handling and get that function we created. And then we can pass in this damage directly to here and it will truncate it, which means if the incoming damage is a float, 
we'll just cut off whatever the decimal is and return the whole number. Now this just discards whatever that decimal is. So if you wanted it instead to round, you could just use the round node. For our game, we're gonna be using integers. So we shouldn't have an issue, so I don't need this, but it's up to you what you think is best. Or you could also use floats here instead if you wanted decimal values for the health of your characters. And as we said, this is gonna return true or false. So we could actually put a branch here and then the true pin of this branch would be handling any death functions for this character or whatever happens when the character's health reaches zero. So for now, I'm just gonna use a print string and I'm going to print health is zero. So that's all set up. Now we just need a way to do some damage to the character. So I'm gonna create another actor and this is gonna be called damage volume because I just wanna create the ability to do some damage to our character. So I'm gonna add a cube here. And this mesh, I wanna change the collision to overlap all. And then here on my event graph, we have this actor begin overlap. We can either use this or we can select the cube and then scroll down to the bottom and there's all these events that we can add and we can use on component begin overlap. And that way we're specifically checking that we're overlapping with the cube. And then this will also return other actors. So this is whatever actor has overlap with it. So there's some various ways we can do this. If we want this to only do damage to the player, we can cast this to the player. If we want this to be able to do damage to any actor, for instance, if it's like fire or something, we can just use uh, get component by class and then put the health component. And then this will get the health component if it's there. So we can use an is valid node. And then if it is valid, then we can do apply damage. And this function here is the other side of this any damage. So these two are linked to each other. So we can just pass in a damage value here. So let's do 20. And the last thing we need to do is pass in this other actor here to damage actor. And that way we know what actor to apply the damage to. And there is our damage volume. And if we go into it, we will take damage. So let's do this five times. And then we should get that print string of health is zero. So that's working. We could also change this damage to 100. And then the first time we pass in, it will just set the health to zero. All right, so I also want the player to be able to do some damage. So I am going to do a few things. The first thing I want to do is have the damage be done by this projectile. And this already has this event hit here. So we could do the same thing we did before and get component by class and find the health component. Now, one thing to note, if you do this this way and these bullets bounce back and hit you, you could actually do damage to yourself. So if we don't want that to happen, we could actually cast it to a actor type or we could cast to our character. And then only if the cast fails, do we do some damage. So there's a variety of ways you could do this. I kind of like the idea that we could do damage to ourselves, So I'm gonna do it this way, but it really is up to you and what you want for your game. So same thing is valid. And if it is valid, we will apply damage. So I'm gonna do 20 damage for these bullets. And one thing to note is we, want it to apply damage to this actor here. But if it doesn't have a health component, we still want the rest of this stuff to happen. So off this is not valid, let's just drag that in there. So if it is valid, we'll do damage and then we do the rest. And if it's not damage, we'll just bypass this and do the rest. So now we just need something that we can do damage to. I'm gonna create another new actor. I'm gonna call this BP enemy just for demonstrations. And let's add a cylinder to this. 
So we'll use a static mesh and then find a cylinder. And then I'll put one of these into the world. Now I can also add the health component we made to this and then do the same functionality that we did on our characters. So any damage, get our health component, damage handling, create a branch. And for this, when the enemy's health reaches zero, I'm going to destroy actor and that will remove it from the level. So let's create a couple of these. And now we can see that when we shoot these after five hits, we will actually destroy that actor. Now, I just wanna note that you will get a little bug if you do this. So when the enemy is destroyed, you'll get this error and what essentially this means, it's not that serious, but what it means is that we had applied damage using this projectile, and then we're passing on to this branch where we see if we can simulate physics and then do the rest of this. Now, the problem is we are applying damage, which means on our enemy actor, after we get damaged, we immediately destroy the actor, and then the projectile is trying to see if it simulates physics, but the actor's already been destroyed. The enemy's already been destroyed. So there's a few different ways we can get rid of this. We could disconnect this pin here, and then that will stop the error from happening. Or you could put a small delay in here to give it time to do the rest of that and then destroy the actor. So it really is up to you. I'm just gonna do this because it's a little bit easier and then we don't have to worry about that delay. But that's pretty much it.